Hello and welcome. This is a video giving a bit more detailed instructions and my expectations on your assignment for SB025, that is for your batch 2023-2024. So welcome back, I'm Miss Delia, and let's have a look at the instructions for the one-year program biology assignment. So if you're ready, let's have a look. Okay, so here we're having a look at two things on the window here. We have one of them is the assignment. So this is the instructions that's been given to you by your lecturers. And for my class, I'm going to give you my expectations of what I expect to see from your assignment. And then later, we'll have a look at some of the templates that we can find on the website called Canva, which is a favorite when it comes to doing assignments like this. So let's have a look at the assignment instructions. The task for your assignment this semester is to prepare an infograph or infographic on the title Biodiversity and Ecology. So this encompass, encompasses your topics for chapters one and two. And the total marks from this assignment will contribute to 15% of your final grade. This assignment must be completed individually. That means every person has to submit their own assignment through the Google Classroom, and your work should be typed. Nothing that is traditionally done, only things that are digitally done, and it should be typed, not written by hand on your iPad either. Your assignment must be in only one page. It is an infographic that must also include the college logo, the title, which is Biodiversity and Ecology, your name, your metrics number, your tutorial class, and also your lecturer's name. So for my class, that would be Miss Delia Rosen Richard, or Miss Delia is also fine if you're saving space on your assignment. And you must also include two references following the APA citation format. Your assignment must be saved as a PDF and submitted digitally in the Google Classroom. This time, please, no more submissions that are in image form or word form. It must be submitted as PDF. Any plagiarism, which means meniru daripada mana-mana sumber, so if you're getting information that is from other sources, please make sure you paraphrase it before adding it into your infograph. Because any plagiarism or late submissions will be penalized based on the rubrics that we have. The first submission draft, uh, which is, when we say draft, we mean a nice looking infograph. The first draft submission will be due on the 9th of February, 2024. That is in week six. At the time that this assignment is released, it is week four. And the final draft, which is after your corrections and as, after it has been returned to you, will be on the 23rd of February, 2024, which is in week eight. The assessment are based on the following criteria, which is number one, integrity, whether you're submitting on time, whether you are messaging your lecturers, asking questions with respectful tone, and uh, whether you put in your references, that will contribute to five marks to your overall grade. The contents of your infograph, they must be relevant to the topic and they must be correct that will contribute 32 marks, and the visual elements. Since this is an infograph, which you can use many various templates for, you don't have to print it out, you should be able to put the best efforts and to really make it visually appealing as well as organized. That will contribute to nine marks. So we'll have a look at the questions here. So the task, it starts with Malaysia, known for its rich biodiversity and lush rainforests, is home to wide variety of flora and fauna, many of which are now at risk of disappearing forever. The main reasons for this endangerment are the loss of their natural habitats, illegal hunting, and the effect of climate change. Malaysia's diverse ecosystems, including rainforests, mangroves, and coral reefs, support an incredible array of wildlife. Some of the endangered species in Malaysia include, when it comes to endangered animals, the Malayan tiger, the Bordean orangutan, the Malayan tapir, Bordean pygmy elephant, the sun bear, rhinoceros hornbill, and leatherback turtles. Whereas endangered plants, we have three on the list. We have Rafflesia, pitcher plant, and Borneo Cori. 
You as a biologist who is very concerned about the endangered species in Malaysia wanted to create awareness to the public about endangered species in Malaysia by using infographics. By creating this infographic, you'll effectively use your expertise as a biologist to educate the public about the endangered species in Malaysia and inspire action to protect this precious wildlife. Your passion for conservation will shine through your work, motivating others to join the cause. So, this is the instruction for your assignment. Choose one of the endangered animal and one of the endangered plant mentioned above and your infographic must include the following information. So remember, you need to choose one from the endangered animal list and one from the endangered plant list. In your infograph, after you have searched up the information, you must include the common name. You write the common name with the correct format Correct format, meaning nothing is italicized, everything is kind of like, you, you know which one is the capital letter, which one is a small letter, and it's a correct spelling. It's a relevant name, and yes, you can get two marks. The second is to include the scientific name with the correct format. So two marks when you put the scientific name of the endangered animal, and two marks when you put the scientific name of the endangered plant. Scientific name, when it comes to format, remember that it has to be italicized and not underlined. Third, look up the taxonomic information. Please put in domain, kingdom, and phylum for the animal. Domain, kingdom, group, and phylum for the plant. For my students, I would love it if you have the space in your infograph to please include information from domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Kalau boleh letak kesembilan-sembilan kategori, uh, kesembilan-sembilan hierarchy punya classification. But if you don't have space in your assignment, then you may choose to keep only the first three, which is uh, for endangered animal, it will be domain, kingdom, phylum. But for endangered plant, you remember, you need to put domain, kingdom, group, and also phylum. So that will give a total of 14 marks. Pajak marka di sini. You must include a picture. So the picture can be drawn or it can be taken from the internet. I would like if you can have a real picture of the animal itself and also where they can be found in Malaysia. This one, you don't have to name specific areas, but say, for example, you tell me that it can be found in, uh, say, Borneo rainforest, that can be one of the places that you can find it. What is their primary threat? You can use the information that is from your lecture notes for chapter 2 for number 6. What is the IUCN status? So IUCN is the international organization that categorizes animals based on their endangered status. So, ini adalah website yang dia akan tunjuk. Ini adalah badan antarabangsa yang menentukan organisme itu hampir pupus, uh, dalam risiko akan pupus dan sebagainya. So, po, tolong, tolong, tolong rujuk balik website ini. Please refer to this website https www.iucnredlist.org to get the information for each of these endangered animals or endangered plant species. And also give one example of conservation effort or initiative in Malaysia for this endangered animal and the endangered plant that you have chosen. And also suggest two actions that can be done to educate people. Selain daripada menghasilkan infograph, apalagi cara kita boleh tingkatkan kesedaran orang lain. Okay, so let's have a look here. So you see this is Canva. For those of you who have used it, amazing. If you haven't, you can just go and there are many options for you to create a design. So when you want to create a design, it is completely up to you what size you want to choose for your infograph. Contoh, kalau kamu mau buat document size ataupun A4 size, tidak masalah. Kalau kamu mau buat poster yang panjang, Contoh, you want to do a very long poster, maybe you want to do infographic, okay, for example, it will give you the template and then you will be able to adjust the space as you wish.
You can use many of the free or even paid templates up to you. Paling bagus guna yang free lah so pay jimat. So uh, you can do this on the website. You can do this on your phone. You can use it use uh, on the apps of the on the on your tablet or even on your iPad. That is completely up to you. You can choose which one you want, but make sure you have space for both your animal as well as your plant species. Okay, let's have a look at one of these examples. Okay, so this is an example of a draft that I have prepared. Bila kamu hantar draft, dia sepatutnya cantik macam ini sudah ya. So you can use this, use, uh, you can create this using any of the templates that are on the website. And this one, what I am showing you is only an example. Contoh yang saya bagi di sini adalah contoh yang belum lengkap. Ini masih ada bahagian yang belum full mark. Okay, so make sure you double check your your information, your poster before you submit it to me. All right, so let's have a look. What are the things that should be in here that must also be in your assignment? So mari kita tengok di sini. Kamu punya assignment mesti ada nama kamu, number matrix kamu, nama lecturer dan Kamu punya class. So, your tutorial class, it must have all this information. Line-line susunan dia tidak apa. Di atas kah, di tepi kah, di bawah. It's fine. Tapi saya lebih suka kalau boleh nampak details kamu di atas. Put in the title, SB025 Biology Assignment. And please add in the college logo. If you cannot find the college logo, let me know. I will send you a PNG version with a transparent background. And I will also put a copy of this in your Google Classroom. So, boleh download dari Google Classroom juga. Remember that you need to have both the endangered animal and the endangered plant. So, for example, here I have chosen the leatherback turtle and I use an image or a drawing that is taken from the internet. Tapi ini, kalau ikut betul, saya tidak mau turtle yang ambil daripada sini. Kalau boleh, saya mau gambar turtle yang sebenar yang kamu boleh ambil daripada internet lah. And over on the right, I have information on my endangered plant, which is the Borneo cowry. And here I have a real picture. So, kalau kamu boleh, tolong dapatkan gambar yang real macam ini. Okay, we look at the scientific name. I mentioned before, scientific name must be italics and not underlined. So, di sini kamu boleh betulkan. Scientific name di sini, Agatis Borneensis. Okay, you also... Don't want to underline, you want to kasih italics. You can tell me the habitat, the distribution, tapi yang paling penting, you can tell me where in Malaysia that you can find it. Contoh, this one, you can find it on peninsular beaches. And maybe even East Sabah beaches. Okay, boleh letak begitu dan adjust ikut Kesesuaian infografi kamu. Adjust it according to the size that is appropriate for your assignment. Look here, scientific name. The title is the common name. I also want the information on the classification. Kalau cukup ruang, sila bagi information dari domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Buat sampai begitu. Kalau cukup ruang. Nah, kalau tidak cukup ruang, tidak apa juga. Untuk di sini, saya mau kamu ambil perhatian di sini ya. Please take note here. Do you look here? Domain, Eukarya. So, domain D mesti huruf besar. Everything else is small letter. Eukarya, E huruf besar. Everything else is small letter. Same thing when it comes to kingdom. Animalia. Phylum or data. If you write down the class or the family, tolong tulis begitu juga. Tapi bila kamu sampai kepada genus, genus mestilah ada huruf besar dan kasih italics. For example here, Dermochelis. Dia punya genus adalah Dermochelis and Dermochelis should be italicized. As for the species name, species name must be italicized, tapi begini cara kita tulis species ya. Walaupun dia sudah level species, saya mau juga kamu tulis D dengan italics, titik, barulah orasi ya. Italics, T sini adalah huruf kecil. 
So take note of that one if you want to write down the full version. Untuk plants, ingat kamu mesti ada domain, kingdom, group, barulah fight. Okay, so then you need to have the IUCN status. You can put it as image. You can also put it as text. Mau ambil yang screenshot begini pun boleh. Mau type pun boleh. Tidak masalah. Right where you can find it in Malaysia. What is the primary threat? Satu primary threat untuk setiap species sudah cukup. Example of conservation efforts or initiative. So, apa contoh cara kita menjaga atau memelihara spesies? Ini, for example, uh, for data back turtles, you can say in situ conservation in protected beaches or by law enforcement. Sebab ancaman dia adalah orang suka makan telur dia atau orang suka makan itu turtle terus kan. So, cara, salah satu cara kita memelihara adalah kita tangkap orang yang makan turtle. So, by finding or by punishing poachers or those who illegally trade this animal. That can be one of the conservation efforts. Ataupun kita jaga dengan tanam dia dalam botanical garden, uh, not the, 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 the plant. The plant you can tanam in the botanical garden or you can create protected forest areas. Don't forget you need to also include actions that can be done to educate people. So bagilah dua information, dua cara kamu boleh in educate people pasal leatherback turtle. Dan dua cara kamu boleh educate people pasal tumbuhan yang kamu pilih. Contoh ini adalah Borneo Kauri. And also please include the reference. Kalau kamu tengok cara ini, cara ini adalah salah. This is not the correct way in order to do APA reference. Macam mana kalau kamu tidak tahu mau buat APA reference? Kamu boleh pergi cari APA citation generator. Okay, yang saya paling suka guna adalah ini, apacitationmachine.net. So, contoh kalau kita pergi kepada website yang macam ini. Okay, you can choose your source. For example, sumber yang saya gunakan untuk dapatkan maklumat adalah website. Okay, so I put in the website. Contohnya, here I want to put in the Wikipedia source. I put in the URL. Yeah, so it will make me help me to cite and then continue. Continue with ads. Okay. Ini ini nanti lah kamu. Ini nanti lah kamu cuba dengan uh, tanpa ad blocker and all that. But remember, when you are using this kind of thing, you need to make sure you choose the APA citation format. Um, if you need the APA citation format, I can link it again in the Google Classroom. Tapi kalau dapat ingat sendiri, lebih bagus lah. Okay, so just to refresh, let us look at what is in this assignment. Title, name, matrix number, lecturer's name, tutorial class, the logo, the title of your organism, okay, species yang kamu pilih. Ini adalah dia punya nama, nama biasa, bukan nama scientific. Image. Scientific name, classification, where you can find it in Malaysia. How is it endangered based on its IUCN status, the primary threat, example of conservation efforts or initiative, actions that can be done to educate people, and reference based on APA citation format. Asalkan kamu punya assignment adalah dalam satu muka surat saya terima. Tidak payah buat cover page, save as PDF dan submit dalam GC bila sedia. Kalau kamu ada sebarang soalan, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. This one I will not share to you because you can come up with your own. And since you are also tertiary level education students, I do expect you to produce very nice infographs. Saya tidak mau infograf yang hodoh-hodoh, calang-calang dibuat ya. Please put effort into it and I hope to see some very creative, some very interesting posters. Ooh, speaking of poster, I also want to tell you that we have our biology open day. 
after your mid-sem break. So selepas cuti mid-sem, 20 hari bulan April, kita akan ada biology day atau bio day, B day, bio open day. So lupa apa title dia. But basically one of the competitions is your bio poster. What? Sekejap saya cari dia poster. Okay, so this has not yet been released, I think. This is our unofficial website for Biology Open Day 2024. So this will be on the 28th of April for all the final, final events. For, as part of our Open Day, we have the Bi B, but B Innovate program. Uh, so some of you have already asked me about this B Innovate program. If you haven't, if you're still interested to create some kind of innovative project to help you learn, feel free to come and approach me, ask me about the thing. Or... You might be interested in singing in front of people, in which case we do also have the Bio Idol competition where you come up with your own lyrics and you sing it in front of people. So this might be something you're interested in. We also have the Bio Map competition. Bio Map competition, this is creating a mind map related to certain chapters in biology. More information will be released later. We also have spelling biology. So this one is for those of you who like to show off your spelling skills. We will have that competition in the future. We also have BioQuest. So this is kind of like, uh, what is this? Uh, Macam Explorers. But then it's more biology themed. This is done in a group. So if that is something you're interested in, you can get ready for that. This is what I was talking about earlier. Kamu punya assignment, hasil daripada assignment kamu, tolong buat cantik-cantik sebab automatik akan dipilih untuk masuk dalam pertandingan bio poster. However, I will only choose one poster from each class. So yang betul-betul, betul-betul, betul-betul terpaling amat cantik, barulah saya akan pilih untuk wakili kelas kamu untuk join ini bio poster. The first prize will be have a... No money, but hamper and also your cocoa marks. Is there more competitions? There will be some exhibitions when it comes to the end of the program. So you will also get to see other people's works, other people's posters, and maybe some pictures of the events um, throughout the whole biology week. Okay, so sekian iklan. So... I would like to summarize this video by saying, make sure you do your assignment well. You do it great. Uh, you do it greatly. Do it your best. Put it all your correct information. Make sure you submit it according to the deadlines. And I will try my best to return it to you as soon as I can as well. And may the best poster win the bio poster competition. So that's all for today. Thank you very much for your time and your attention. If you have any questions regarding your assignment, feel free to ask me. Or if you're from another class, ask your own lecturer. Thank you very much. I'll see you again. Bye.